<sighs> All right. I will get it out of the way to begin with. I'm probably going to sound even less excited if that's even possible because I am very tired. So I apologize for that to begin with. But the show will go on and must as well. Whatever. Monday. You know what Mondays are like. Mondays are states as I punch the mic. Sorry. And uh, let me just double check again. I've got everything running. Because paranoia be like that. And remember last week we did Ohio. And if you cheated and looked ahead to see what the next day was going to be. I think I even mentioned it on Friday in that weird video. Uh, that we're doing Oklahoma. And i got to be a little honest. I was more surprised at least by the... Um, environmental diversity of the state that I thought before. I thought it was just some big flat plain, but apparently I was extremely wrong. And hopefully I can get into that along with some other topics as well. So, without further ado, let us start the game. Here is Oklahoma. Now, probably when you think of Oklahoma, this very well could be what you imagine. Uh, way more mountains here than probably you would think, but let's take a look at the state itself. Here is Oklahoma. Let's zoom out. Here's the U.S. Oklahoma's down here in, well, the mid Midwest, the southern part. You got Texas to the south, Arkansas to the east, a little bit of Missouri. North is Kansas, and a little bit of Colorado. You got some New Mexico to the west. It is sometimes known as the Panhandle State. Because it looks like a pan. Here's the uh, handle of it, and here is the pan itself. Very imaginative. It is capital is Oklahoma, and the bigger metropolitan areas are Tulsa and maybe a little bit of Norman. But it's usually just these two when you think of uh, large urban areas within Oklahoma. I think a huge percentage of the population, maybe like eighty or so, actually live in. Uh, the metropolitan areas of Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Granted, I don't know how big those metropolitan areas are. I'm sure someone would be able to tell you that. Um, the capital, as I said, was Oklahoma City. Its uh, nickname is Native America, Land of the Red Man, and Sooner State. Um, interestingly, um, the name itself, Oklahoma, comes from a Choctaw word, Okla and Huma which means red people, literally. And uh, that's where Native America part comes from. A lot of uh, relocated Native Americans in the what would eventually be all of the U.S. were relocated to uh, Oklahoma. You know, a lot of it forcefully. You can look up uh, Trail of Tears as an uh, example of that if you wanted to. Um... It's also the Sooner State, and apparently, I didn't know this before, Sooner is the name given to settlers who entered the unassigned lands in what is now the state of Oklahoma before the official start of the land rush in 1889. And that is, looking at the map here of what Oklahoma is, it's kind of like this nugget here. So you have a state called the Red, uh, Red People State. Which seems a bit derogatory, granted, if you know about the NFL and their, uh, one of the teams there and one of the issues they have. Can I actually get on this road? Because I want to find out what, I guess we can't. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to find out where we are exactly on this road. It's very straight, very flat. But there seems to be an interesting juxtaposition between uh, calling it the Sooner State and the... Uh, uh, the what was it? The, the land of the red man, whatever. Um, no loaded trucks. Let's see what else we got here. Um, total area is about sixty nine. I don't know if I'm actually gonna see a route sign on this road at all either. Uh, the the total area of it is about sixty nine, almost seventy thousand square miles, which makes it the twentieth, um, in size in the U.S. 
Where the fuck is a root sign? There is nothing here. Oh, if I had to guess by my newfound geological, geographical Rainy Mountain Creek. The location of this, I would say this may be down here. I'm just going to guess that. I have zero idea. Um, we'll get to the area length. The highest mountain is Black Mesa Mountain, which is 4,975 feet, which is a bit taller than I thought it was going to be. Okay, we were nowhere near it. It was on the uh, farther west. Uh, I'm going to do a bad score on this. Just, just be prepared for that. The lowest elevation is Little River at the Arkansas border, which is right over here. One of these chunks of land here, uh, which is 289 feet above sea level. Population is almost 4 million, which is 28th largest smack dab. In Ow. Went to go slap a bug and it kicked my leg right in the chair. That kind of hurt. Um, 28th smack dab in the middle, just like where it is in the country itself. You've got the medium rank household income is 50,000, which puts it down at 44, which is pretty goddamn low. Um, let's look over some other quick little factoids here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. With ancient mountain ranges, prairies, mesas, and eastern forests, most of Oklahoma lies in the Great Plains. As you probably would assume, cross timbers in the U.S. interior highlands. All regions are prone to severe weather. Oklahoma is on a confluence of three major agricultural, well, three major American cultural regions historically served as routes for cattle drives, destination for southern settlers, and government-sanctioned territory for Native Americans. More than 25 Native American languages are spoken in Oklahoma alone, which is pretty crazy, but when all of them from Florida up north I'll just get shoved over here to this one little state. That's bound to happen. Um, another thing, if you know a little bit more about the, uh, this is where all the senior citizens are housed in the state. It's a very small container. They shove them into, I want to see what, is that and all these were bird, uh, bird nests, bird, home, bird houses. Why couldn't I think of that word? Fuck. That looks like a church or a very weird looking house. We're in Henrietta, Oklahoma. I don't know where that is. Uh, but if you know anything about uh, like climate and weather in the U.S., we have tornadoes. And tornadoes are very particular. Like a lot of things have to happen for it actually to occur. Uh, you need like warm, humid air coming in from the Gulf, which we very much do. Comes up here with a lot of dry. Uh, cold air from other sections of the country wherever it comes from and they slam into each other in areas here and it causes violent reaction huge thunderstorms eventually tornadoes it's very flat here too which can well sections of it are flat which can very much help with you getting destroyed by um tornadoes well, i'm actually on the main stretch here so hopefully i can find out where henrietta is here I don't have any idea in particular where it is. West side apartments, no pets. Oh, this is one of those like econ efficiency apartments where it used to be a hotel or a motel and then they decided we can't make any money that way. We're just going to turn them into apartments. You can get some bets. Catfish apparently right at this gas station. Catfish are okay. Ooh, we do have an airport. Uh... Got Henrietta RV Park. Ooh, we, I think actually this has a root sign on it if I get over here. Nope, that just says the airport. God damn it. Can I get a root sign, please? I need to find... Okay, here we go. We're near the junction of something. Highway 62, something works. We're south on 75. All right, I finally have somewhere to go on. Here's 75. So we're going to look for Henrietta. Right through Turley. It's a great word. It's like Turlet. Okay, 75 seems to have disappeared and ends. Unless 62 merges with it. Which it very much might do. I haven't seen a section. Okay, it does change its name. 
Oh, 75's over here. What the fuck? Oh, we shift over. Okay, this is confusing, to say the least. I've got a minute left. I have not seen Henrietta. Okay, we're in Texas now. That's Plano. Let's get back to here. And look for Henry. Oh, Henrietta. Here we go. All right, so... Here's Henrietta. We're going to hit home, and I want to find the name of this street in the 40 seconds I have left. See if I can't pinpoint this a bit better. I do see the sign over here. We're on South 11th Street. South 11th Street. Okay. Got to look for the retirement home. Okay. We're, like, right there. I'm going to hit home. How close am I? Very. Um. Maybe, maybe, maybe eh, I want to pinpoint this like perfectly. We're right next to the 11th Street, which is like right here. So I'm going to click there. All right, nailed that. Okay, now I wanted to talk a bit about the fuck you for not giving 5,000. All right, let's, let's look at uh, biography. This is the thing I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> It's going to be a bit of a paragraph, so my apologies. Oklahoma is between the Great Plains and the Ozark Plateau, which is to the east, on the eastern side of the state. Let's, let's zoom out. I can probably, you know, visually show that to you as a uh, better way to explain it. All right. Oklahoma's here. All right. It's between the Great Plains, which is uh, this chunk here. Ozarks, which are here in this, like, little nugget of land. Uh, Gulf of Metal, Mexico watershed, which is to the south, generally sloping from the high plains on its western boundary to low wetlands of its southeastern boundary. Its highest and lowest points follow this trend, with its highest peak, Black Mesa, above sea level, which is in the far northwest corner, which is over here. Uh, in the panhandle, like I mentioned, a uh, little grippy part there of a pan. State's lowest point is the Little River near the southeastern border, so it's down here. So, it, you know, it's falling the grade, the, the grade, the slope of the state seems to go down the farther east you go. Among the most geographically diverse states, Oklahoma is one of four to harbor more than 10 distinct ecological regions, with 11 at its borders, which surprised me thinking that Oklahoma, I think it's a lot like Kansas, where it's just flat, fucking nothing, but it shows how much I know. It's got more per square mile than any other state. So, you know, the states always have to prove, oh, we got the thing here that no one else has got. I guess that's Oklahoma's is we got more ecological region. Okay. Oklahoma has four primary mountain ranges, blah, blah, blah. You got the Wichita, which I probably pronounced wrong. You got the Arbuckle, Wichita, and Ozarks. Uh, what was the thing I wanted to go? Weather is a... Climate. All right, yeah, we're, we'll talk about climate in the next one. That's enough blathering on about ecological region. Eco, which is different from echo. Josh Moore for sheriff. What does this say? They support our police officers and their families. Good for them. Uh, what little... Is this a... Either this is a library... Oh, I was going to say library school or uh, town hall, but it's Heritage Park. Uh, retirement home? Oh, it's just apartments. Give me a location. Where are we? We got a trolley crossing. I can just feel how hot it is. I mean, it's hot as fuck today, and it's going to be all this week, which sucks. El Reno? Public School Transportation Apartment. Okay doesn't help me. I don't know where El Reno is. If I had to assume, it's farther south on the Oklahoma-Texas border, but eh. This just looks hot and flat. We've got Little Hoots. That's my rap name. My album will be dropping in a week. With my group called Little Hoots and the Toots. Hot fried fish. I wonder if that's hot like temperature or it's fried. Could be good. Where am I going? Give me... This seems to turn more suburban, and I don't want that. I want to find out 
where he is. What's the name? Oh, you got rid of your sign? No, it's, it's hidden by a goddamn tree. Lincoln? What a surprisingly common name for either a school, county, or town. I don't know if I'm going to find where we're at. I got to hit home. I'm going to go the other way. I feel, I feel like, uh, what way did I go? This way? Um, we're going to turn left. Give me a location. Root sign. Something. It's just all flat. It feels hot here. We got a school district here, maybe? Seems to have a trolley in town here. Interesting. Guess, what is this? Is this like a... Academy? Institution? Why is it closed off like this? Can I... Oh, I can get here. Okay. What's happening? They're, oh, they're constructing something. And this is... Freno? Fresno? I got a minute left. I don't know where the fuck this is. Oh, wait. That construction may help. Oh, we got a trolley. How fancy. Cantera, that doesn't help me. Uh, so... Apparently this town has trolleys. Good for them. I thought she was about to moon us. Uh, we've got Canadian County Historical, whatever. Last time I checked, this was America, not Canada. I don't know where this is. We've got a hospice right downtown. That's depressing. Ooh, we got 81. So I've got somewhere to start. If I can find 81. Well, there's 81 which is probably a long-ass chunk of El Reno. Oh, shit. I found it. Okay, El Reno High School. Let's hit home. And what were we near? Some sort of Heritage Park apartments. I doubt I'm going to find that. I'm surprised I found El Reno. All right. Uh... Cool, that was pretty close. I just want to talk about the climate just because this helps a lot with tornadoes. As I mentioned before, it's in a transition tone between semi-arid further to the west, humid continental to the south, humid subtropical to the east and the southeast. Most of the state lies in an area known as Tornado Alley, characterized by frequent interaction between cold, dry air from Canada, warm to hot, dry air from Mexico, and the southwestern U.S. with warm, moist air. All that slams together, and you just get... Twisters. Go watch the movie Twister. Because it's a dumb movie. <laughs> uh, on average, 60 tor 62 tornadoes strike the state per year. It's one of the highest rates in the world. Yeah, you need a lot of exact things to happen, climate-wise, for tornadoes to hit. And this section of the U.S. is just, where's my mouse? Perfect for it. Because you got, as he said, eat, eat. And it just all slams together. Uh, because of Oklahoma's position between zones of differing prevailing temperatures and winds, weather patterns within the state can vary widely over relatively short distances. This was pretty crazy. And they can change drastically in a short time. On November 11th, 1911, temperature in Oklahoma City reached 83 degrees, which is 28 degrees Celsius. It's a record high for the state. Then a cold front came in causing the temperatures to reach 17 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a below, which was a record low for that day at midnight. That also helps. Rapid change in temperature is another thing that causes tornadoes to happen. Uh, apparently, this type of phenomenon is also responsible for many of the tornadoes in the area, such as the 1912 Oklahoma tornado outbreak when a warm front traveled along a stalled cold front, resulting in an average of about one tornado an hour. That's crazy. Which happened April 27th to 29th. That's crazy. 40 people died, 120 injured. Uh, rains a lot. It's very subtropical and humid. Uh, apparently the driest time of year is in the fall, in winter. Ooh, we do have a sign. Exit. Well, thanks. Um... Around four or five. Other things I wanted to get to before I forget. 
other things that I wanted to forget to in order to for, so not to forget. What the fuck did I just say? I, I don't even know. Port of Muskogee and Tulsa on the second right. Perfect timing we talk about. Um, Tulsa and the uh, history there. I don't know if how many of you, I haven't actually seen it myself. I want to. Where is Tulsa? Tulsa's over here. We're looking at 165. If I can see that. That's the root sign. You got the little panhandle there. Let you know where we are. I need to get off this to see the hypo we're on. So let me do this. You know how it goes. I didn't want that. What's happening? Thank you. I need to get to this sign to see what highway this is. 62 West. Okay. Zoom out, find 62. Now, even numbers go west, east, odd, north, south. I found 60. Where is 62? I found 64. There's 62. Now it needs to go to 160, 165, was it? Let's hit home and find out precisely. Now, um, one of the 165 North, okay. 165 North. So we're like potentially here. That means the Arkansas River should be right over here, but I don't think it is. I think I might be going a uh, different route here. The toll road, we got 165 and 351 south. Let's zoom out and look for 351. So it is sharing this. So actually, I think we might be on this side. So I'm going to hit here. I think this, I think this is where we are. Anyway, let's talk about uh, if you have not seen the show, The Watchmen, which I hear is fantastic. I haven't seen it myself. I've only read the book. Book's great, or graphic novel, whatever you want to call it. It's a very good piece of literature. Movie, it's okay. But the show apparently was fantastic, and one of the things it talked about was the Tulsa Race Massacre. Now to set up a little bit. Um, in Oklahoma, when they were relocating Native Americans and eventually going to make it into a, integrate it into a state. Uh, I need to find exactly where it is. Okay, here we go. So we're not gonna get much change in scenery here. I'm just gonna be reading this off. Uh, okay, Oklahoma has a, a rich African-American history. Many towns thrived in the early 20th century because of black settlers moving from neighboring states, especially Kansas. A politician named Edward McCabe encouraged black settlers to move to what is, was then the Indian Territory. Oklahoma would, part of Oklahoma what it would turn into. He discussed with President Roosevelt at the time of the possibility of making an Oklahoma a majority black state. Um, now, since other states were kicking them out and uh, Oklahoma wanted them to come. That's a huge... Oh, yeah, because we were on the exit ramp. You dummy. Why did you remember that? Uh, now that since they were focusing that, um, blacks coming to the state, they were encouraging it, get people to live there. Um, we get to something called the Tulsa Race Massacre. So I'm just going to read the blurbs from Wikipedia. <clears throat> Uh, took place on May 31st and June 1st, 1921, when mobs of white residents attacked black residents and businesses of the Greenwood District in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I'm going to move, scroll out just a bit so we can actually see where Tulsa is. As I said, it's the other big metropolitan area. Um, all right. It has been called the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. The attack carried out on the ground and from private aircraft, destroyed more than 35 square blocks of the district, at the time the wealthiest black community in the U.S., known as Black Wall Street. Uh, ba -ba -bum -bum. About 
800 people were admitted to hospitals and about 36 people were dead. Uh, about 26 black and 10 white, apparently, after a 2001 state commission. Uh, let's see here. Massacre began over Memorial Day weekend when 19 year old Dick Rowland uh, was accused of assaulting Sarah Page, who was a, well, Dick Rowland, a black man, was accused of assaulting Sarah Page, 17 year old white elevator operator of nearby Drexel Building. He was taken into custody after the. Ugh, throat's a bit dry. After the arrest, rumors spread through the city that he was going to be lynched. Upon hearing reports that a mob of hundreds of white men have gathered around the jail where Dick was being held, a group of 75 black men, some armed, came to the jail with the intention of helping to make sure he wouldn't be lynched. Uh, if you're not sure what lynching is, it's a large mob of people hanging a person. Generally, when it's talked in this instance, at least in this country, it's a mob of white men white people hanging. I think it's generally been black men. It could also be black women. I'm not completely up on every single lynching. You just go with generalizations. Uh, the sheriff proceeded the group of black men to leave the jail, assuring them that it was under control. And as they were leaving, complying with the request, a member of the white mob attempted to disarm one of the black men, and a shot was fired. And then, according to a report, all hell broke loose. At the end of the firefight, 12 were killed, 10 white and 2 black. As the news of these dead spread, a mob, mob violence exploded, where white, white riders rampaged through the neighborhood at night and morning, killing men and burning, looting stores and homes. Uh, let's see. Then, eventually, National Guard came in to get control, declared martial law. And about 10,000 black people were left homeless, and property damage amounted to more than 1.5 million in real estate and 75, 750,000 in personal property, which was equivalent to 32.25 million in 2019 dollars. And the property was never recovered, or were they ever compensated for it? After this happened, many survivors left Tulsa. Uh, while black and white residents who stayed in the city were silent for decades about it, the massacre was largely omitted from local, state, and national histories. 1996, 75 years later, a bipartisan group of state legislators authorized the formation of a commission to study the race riot. Members were reported to investigate the events, uh, look into it, and eventually a uh, commission found a report published in 2001 said that the city had conspired with the mob of white citizens against black citizens. It recommended a program of reparations to survivors and their descendants. The state passed legislation to establish some scholarships for descendants of survivors to encourage economic development of Greenwood and develop Memorial Park in Tulsa for the victims. Um, if you probably talk to the vast majority of at least Americans, they know very little of the uh, Tulsa race riots. I probably didn't hear about it for until maybe 10, 15 years ago. It wasn't really ever talked about. Well, okay, that was a long-winded sentence there. Sorry for the tangent. It was just interesting to hear about. Uh, again, just use that as a launch-off point if there was any other history, at least, of what it was. And if you need to know more details as to the background behind it, the uh, economic disparagement, uh, this, the, the difference in economic, why can't I say words right now? Economical disparities, discrepancies, fuck. Words ain't working. Between the blacks and the whites around then, the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, there's a lot of other little... Boga? Baga? Is this an oil? Baker Hughes Experimental Test Area. Uh, another thing that leads to, um, I guess, economic development within the state itself, a lot of natural gas, uh, farming, herding. Uh, I don't know if fracking's very big out here. Could be. These are just buzzwords I hear, and I'm just parroting them to you. This is a very rural chunk of it. Uh, is there anything else I can quickly scan over here? Uh, 
I remember listening to a podcast talking about the uh, public school systems in uh, Oklahoma and how they're fantastic, apparently. I uh, wish I could remember exactly which one it was, but it was, it was pretty interesting to hear how maybe they kind of got tricked into it. But what is this? That doesn't help me. What is this road? I can't tell, but this is actually a paved road, so this is progress. We could potentially get a route sign on it. That's why I've ditched the dirt road. There's been very few dirt roads I've seen that I've actually had road signs on them, and usually they're county roads that they're impossible for me to actually see because I would need to zoom the fuck in and get lucky to actually see it. Uh, where is it? I'm just going to click for a very long ways and hopefully see where we are. I got them probably 75% uh, higher score than I thought I would doing this. But we kind of got fortunate on some of the uh, guesses here, I think, or locations they gave us. Anything else to... A lot of evangelicals live in um, Oklahoma, something like 53% according to the last census that was taken. It's pretty high. Uh, they have one professional uh, sports team with the Oklahoma City Thunder, formerly Seattle Supersonics. Ooh, 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 this may be my only chance to maybe see where we are. Nope. That didn't help me. I don't see what we're at near the crossroads unless Bone Thugs and Harmony actually uh, created that, which I doubt they did. This looks to be uh, OGE. I don't know what that is. Oklahoma General Electric, maybe? I'm just assuming I'm putting O in that as being Oklahoma and just random G words and E words. This is a speed limit sign, meaning I'm getting close. No, it's not. That's speed limit 55. Speed limit 45, and we're on a dirt road. I don't want that. We're going to stay on the... We're going to stay... Fuck. I ran out of time. I was not going to choose here, to be fair. I was probably going to put it over farther west, but I can't remember to hit. Well, there's bags. It wasn't bugs. It was bags. I can't ever remember to actually click things when I just start prattling on. 32 minutes. Jesus Christ. This one went on long. So I will not hold you any longer than I already have. I'd like to thank you all for watching my prattling on of Oklahoma. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, complaints, suggestions, like, favorite, comments, and or subscribes, put them in the comments below or the following buttons that tell you to do any of those things. Please do it. Um, I'm always up for hearing your thoughts down below, and I will get back to you if I can ever actually get the notifications to notify me of such messages. But anyway, Monday's done. Wednesday will be here. Before you know it, thankfully, it'll get a little colder because I hate this weather. Um, and that's besides, besides the point. Have a good start to your week, folks. I'll see you back here on Wednesday for some more Jessing Jessing Jodgerty.